the music in the background, we live at the Costa Rica Sailing Center and there's a restaurant on our property called Hemingway's. And today's Sunday and it's Sunday Fun Day. That's what you hear going on in the background. So yes. we'll see, so we'll see if this how even the sound works. <laughs> we live here on the property, just like Jeff said, and it's Sunday and we want to share this message show. It's just kind of happening when it's while it's happening, so just bear with us. So if we're trying to get the story of about a year and a half ago with COVID and kind of seeing everybody locked down and kind of living with a lot of kind of fear it seemed and you know fear of the pandemic, fear of you know financial times for a lot of companies, a lot of businesses. Uh, we kind of took the opportunity to close up our operation here at the sailing center, green screened it in. It was actually kind of a nice period because we had the whole property to ourselves, yeah. which isn't too uh, normal. And we <laughs> went offshore on a friend's boat and really kind of stirred up a lot of feelings for me because I've spent quite a bit of time on the water. Like and, your whole life. Yeah, my whole life. Sailed here to Costa Rica 20 years ago, sailing here actually longer, 28 years ago. And been here sailing and doing charter businesses and sailing for the last 20 years. So Lindsay and I uh, kind of both really love being back out on the boat and the simplicity of life and uh, the meaningfulness of it all. And got a bug in our butt to be like, hey, let's get a boat. And, uh, originally, we talked all sorts of different types of boat, anywhere from a 35 to 50 foot, more or less, no, on a hull. And, uh, Kind of the same range anyways, maybe a little bigger on the catamaran side of things. So when we first got the idea that we wanted to get a boat, Jeff is a sailor uh, by the true sense of the word, lived on his boat and the Bay Area in his 20s and sailed down here to Costa Rica. When we started looking, we were just looking to get a boat to maybe have some fun on, and then that turned to let's buy a sailboat for both of us to go cruising, and then it was, well, we're not really in the place to go cruising at this point, and it went from looking for a 35-foot sailboat to a 40-foot, then 45-foot sailboat to we found Invictus, which is a 60-foot catamaran it's a 60 foot power catamaran but it was never finished one owner so it's the design and shape of a sailing cat we intended to finish it uh, and then that's another part of the story how we decided to keep it as a power cat just so, because it's ease of use but what I was gonna say is what uh, Lindsay did not mention is we kind of transitioned to hey let's use this as a business and do uh, surf dive and exploration charters here in Costa Rica uh, where you know I've been here 20 years, Lindsay's been living down here about three and a half years now, and we know this coastline you know, better than most, and, uh, and it's one of the reasons I wanted to also do uh, an episode at some point to kind of instruct on uh, sailing the Costa Rican coastline, because I've seen a few channels and people have been a little bit negative on it, which deservedly, if you don't have local knowledge, this place can be a pain in the ass. The saying here is... Costa Rica, the official kind of uh, saying is we make easy hard. So when it comes to boaters and cruisers, they did not create the best system. So it can be a pain in the ass if you don't know what you're doing. But we'll save that for another time because I'd love to tell all of you out there about there's so many amazing angles. Where to go, what to do. And there's a lot of ways to kind of skirt the official stuff that's such a pain in the butt. Um, so we'll definitely get that video out. Actually, probably pretty soon because now I've seen three or four. Um, and everyone that has only negative things to say when they come to Costa Rica. You can tell it's caused a, a bunch of cruisers a lot of frustration. And we can do an episode where we tell you how to make it worth it because it really is worth cruising this place. It's amazing and beautiful. So we will get there. That being said, we so we started looking for sailboat. Went from 35 foot up to you know 60 60 foot. We actually went and looked at this. It was pretty much a shipwreck. It was a 100 foot sailboat that when we went to go look at it, it was all but there was, I guess, a squad or someone living on the boat, uh, which was, it was just fun just to go and look and see all this because for me, I'm very new to the cruising world and having a sailboat. Everything I know is through Jeff and just kind of the last few years. And so there's still a lot for me to learn 
which I'm really excited about. But it went from just getting something for leisure to finding a catamaran, a 60 foot catamaran. And now, so we've just been pumped to um, get this boat, bring it to Costa Rica, start doing surf and dive charters up and down the coast, private charters where we have enough space to you know, accommodate six other individuals uh, plus ourselves and our crew on board um, and you know, take off for three days, a week, a week and a half, you know, you name it. We just, we, we're set up to just, you know, take a whole family or a bunch of friends out for multiple days and just have the best time um, through these waters from Costa Rica. And we even wanted to go up to Nicaragua. Now go Salvador a bit. and Panama. I mean, there's so many great cruising grounds down here in Central America. Um, and the boat that we purchased in Victus uh, especially running it as a power cat, as much as I love sailing, and I'm a sailor at heart. Getting older, the thing's so easy, it's so fun, and Lindsay and I can run it, just the two of us, very easily. We well, can still change to a sailing cat down the road if we decide the romance, the beauty of it, I watch it, I'm always like a little bit jealous, like watching people sail their genikers and their, you know, cruising and going under wind power alone and quiet. But I'm sure you cruisers out there watching know also whatever what else comes with it, especially at that size range. So for now, we're super happy on, on this boat. It's amazing. So that being said, we were in Florida for about four months after we bought the catamaran, and we had put a deposit down to get the boat rigged, and we're pretty much set. The only thing we need is the boom, the mast, and the sails, and so we had everything measured. Every, everything else. Everything was done, and just a few days later, we kind of thought about it, and our idea to do private surf and dive charters up and down this coastline, it, it didn't make sense from a business standpoint with the trips that we want to do with Invictus to spend the extra money and it just didn't it just didn't make sense as much as Jay, Jeff is a sailor and really kind of struggled with not doing it uh, when we talked about it with our approach with Invictus and knowing that that was our boat this is the boat for us and I just really everything about it um, I was just you know kind of checked all of the boxes and so we decided to uh, pull our deposit, which they were um, uh, Max Sales. We talked to them; they were very they kind. They were awesome, to, and great. To, Max Sales in Florida, they do great work, and they totally understood. I mean, we they actually had our mask ordered, and we had a deposit down. And I really expected kind of a different response when I uh, when we changed our mind, decided to not rig it, and they were amazing. I returned our deposit, and uh, but I've been working with them for years and years, and. Uh, I think they've got a uh, they've got a good thing going. They've got a good reputation. So, so yeah. So we definitely highly recommend Max Sales if you have any rigging or uh, sail making needs. They're super professional. The guy running the the, the place has been there forever. Um, but Travis. Travis. But that's neither here nor there. We have a power cat now, uh, which we are absolutely in love with. Uh, it was uh, just me and Jeff on the boat for the last. Or for the first seven, eight months, uh, almost nine, and now we have a local employee who helps me clean and organize, and helps Jeff um, do some other work with uh, with the engines, and just kind of keeping everything clean and up to date, and helping us clean the bottom. Because for the first seven months, it was just the two of us doing everything, and it is it's 60 feet is a lot of boat, and it's not just a boat. There's it's a catamaran, there's two holes, so it's double everything. And yeah, there's a lot of work, but. <laughs> oh, which is it's fine, it's fine, it's just. Uh, I'm looking I, forward to the some... day when I can just do the boat and tinker around on different projects. Currently, we still have a uh, few different businesses here in Costa Rica, so we're kind of like probably a lot of you out there, still aspiring to get into the point where we're actually kind of doing all boat and uh, not all the stuff on land. So, yeah, we're getting there. That being said, we we found this boat, and I, it had been on the market for quite a, a while. And it's an older boat. Invictus is how 1990. It's a 1994, 60 feet long, 31 foot beam, one owner who spent five years building it in South Carolina. It's a beautiful boat, cherry and mahogany wood on the inside, strong as a tank. Definitely not having any 
issues with this boat crossing oceans. Uh, the way it's built is really impressed me. It's uh, strong as a tank. It's amazing. It's got water maker, has a beautiful little galley, has four staterooms. It's funny because I know all you boat owners out there are probably like going, headache, headache, headache. But whatever, I'm looking forward to those headaches. Uh, air compressor to fill our dive tanks. A uh, nice 14-foot tender that came with the boat, nice big back deck. Something to be said for catamarans. I'm really more of a monohull sailor at heart, but I've been sailing catamarans down here for 20 years. Like one of the first charter catamaran businesses on the west coast of Costa Rica here. So I did that for a long time, but um, just like one of the sailing channels I was just watching, we're big on surfers and the, uh, I think it was on Delos they were talking about. Which I've actually heard you say before. It was the, yeah, the, like, the wife, she said, she said, I have cut, it's come to my conclusion, something about that uh, monohull uh, and sailboats surfing. and surfing do not go together because if you're anywhere near a surf spot and you've got the swell coming in, you know, that boat is just going It's a lot back more and rolly. And, and so we have like the stability and the flatness of catamarans it is pretty darn nice. And there's, you know, everybody can do their arguments. There's drawbacks and sailing, you can get a lot more pure sailing, you get a lot more angle of wind if you're actually sailing it. But again, this thing, uh, super fuel efficient, has a long range, Yanmar diesels that are super easy to maintain and they're really low on consumption, so. And we've even, we've even, um, we've even anchored at a place called Witch's Rock, a pretty famous surf spot here that was featured in Endless Summer. Um, so that's a classic movie, but we've, on swells, we've anchored just right there, right in front of the surf spot and been able to just, you know, pretty hold, hold pretty strong all night long. The ground tackle we have on this boat, the just the solidity of like every single system on this boat was just overbuilt. Uh, like the, I, the previous owner was a, a engineer by trade, and there's a redundancy system for this, and it's just it's an amazing safe. As safe as it, uh, you know, a boat could be yeah, this strong. Boat's, this boat's been through a category four hurricane, no problem. And if you saw the ground tackle, because eventually you guys will see this boat that we're talking about, but currently we're at home. Um, that's another story we're going to get into. I don't know when, but uh, <laughs> this uh, boat was built uh, extremely well on the ground tackle. I sleep like a baby at night in some pretty hairy anchorages. Uh, this just handles beautifully. And what else? About a year ago, we were on our way down from Florida. We purchased the boat up uh, near Fort Pierce, Florida. We spent a couple of months up there. No, we purchased the boat in Fort. It was Fort... Stewart. Yeah, in we Stewart. It. But we went up to Fort Pierce pretty quick, and I gotta say, I love that place. Super nice marina, super nice people. Fort and, Pierce City Marina. And, uh, Those people were so great. Right. We came down in hurricane season. We actually left in August, but. Um, we had a great weather tracker working with us and we decided to take the down to Key West around the northwest of Cuba to Isla Mujeres, Mexico and then bomb pretty quick all the way down to uh, uh, Panama where we spent a few months uh, fixing the boat up. And yeah, and uh, yeah, we were in Linton Bay uh, with, uh, next to actually we really became better friends later uh, with Colin um, Parlay Revival. I had no idea what that guy was going through when I actually met him at the marina. Then I later saw his videos. And, you know, uh, same with David She was another guy we met down there. And those guys are rock stars. To uh, watch what they did to make their boat safe uh, is impressive. Not what they did, what they went through and, and endured. Well, what they did and what they went <laughs> Oh, God. So I think that's Parlay Revival, uh, one YouTube and the other one. I think David's is just David She, right? S -H -I -H. David She or She She just, sells. Yeah, super super <laughs> right. entertaining. So, um, anyways, uh, what else? So, oh well, we were thinking to start this YouTube channel at the time that we bought the boat, and even before we bought the boat, when we were going through the process. So that at that point, I was beginning gathering some film, putting some stuff together, and we were having a lot of fun with it as we were go flying to Florida trying to make our decision, gathering all of this, and then we bought the boat. Yeah, we looked at a lot of boats. We, we traveled back and forth to, uh, we are mostly looking in Florida, and uh, I think we did three trips up there, and then we found this boat. And it was actually Lindsay who found the boat and said, because we were looking at everything from lagoons to uh, whatever, Fontaine Peugeot to 
thought I'd remember all the names of that. Stuff that was more expensive, kind of but from a business cabaret. standpoint, we were thinking, okay, well, we're going to be working this. This is going to be an, an investment for us to work. But we looked, it, it, we, we, anyway, we did look at everything. We looked at, at a lot, and Lindsay was one that found it. She said, hey, there, do you want to go look at this power cap? And I he said, wasn't going to look. He I was said, like, I no. no. <sighs> I do not want to look at the power cap. I have no desire. But it just happened, I think it was on our third trip, second or third trip. Uh, we were looking at another boat, so Lindsay said, remember that boat I told you about the power cap? Maybe we should go look at it, because I think it's right around the corner. And so we're like, yeah, well, since it's up and close, let's go take a look. And uh, I will say, I stepped on the boat and immediately went, this is the boat uh, that I want. Because I mean, I saw it just, I could see the engineering, I could see the care from the previous owner. I could see the durability and the strength of the boat and the shape of it and the low profile and the uh, pretty much checked all the boxes except it didn't have a mast and we thought we'd finish it out. Well, so going back just a second, so in the last couple of videos, if you've read any of the description, I was asking you guys if you would, if you could guess what type of boat that we have. and. We'll tell you. The type of boat we have is a custom... That's not fair because nobody's going to answer that. Nobody's going to guess that. No, I know. So it's like, you know, I, I put some things out there as like a hint of what it isn't. And I pretty much listed everything except for what our boat... See what I'm dealing with here? What our boat is. No, Can but it's... It? Listen. Um, I'm, I'm always... <laughs> so it's a, it's a custom built Simpson um, catamaran um, that was uh, built in uh, South, South Carolina, Carolina. by, Columbia. Columbia, what South was Carolina. the name of the... the uh, Craft Marine. Craft Marine. They spent five years and uh, the boat uh, A five-year build. Well fitted out with a whole library of all the manuals, photos of the build. Um, it was impressive. I mean, this guy that well, we the level purchased of attention from to detail was a whole new level. I wish I could be like that. I, I think I'm too old. But I try to make him running, be like so. that, but he's like kind of hard. It takes a type A personality. My personality probably will end up coming through. I am not type A. I'm very type B, but Lindsay is type A. So somehow A, B <laughs> fills the ABCs. So yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, what else? Uh, I've got a lot of journeys and stories we want to share with you at some point. Well, oh, I didn't finish. So, we, so when we were going to look at all of these boats and going through the process, and I wanted to start the YouTube channel at the time, and Jeff was like gung ho and like on board, on board. Right now, it's a little bit of a different story, but we were getting, gathering all this film, going through the whole process, which I'll share some of those old videos. Um, I might kind of include them here and there. Uh, and this one, but we uh, we were looking and then we bought the boat and now we're on the boat and it's day one that we we got the boat and uh, we're just, we, every, we closed on it, we spent the night on the boat and the next day we were so excited and hey, let's put the dinghy in the water and go for a little cruise, Jeff says. So we lifted the boat, got it off the back deck, lowered it in the water and then the engine of the dinghy wouldn't start. And then Jeff spent not only the rest of that day, but the whole next week working on the engine dinghy. And that's kind of how our uh, welcome into boat, our boat uh, began, which was like, oh, let's take a leisure cruise. And then we didn't even get to go do that for like a week and a half um, because it just went straight into work. And in a very, very, very short time, Jeff was like, uh, I, I need more help on the boat this is take this is taking too much time and we just kind of need to put this on hold so i agreed we we were you know up to our neck with um to you know to do's and we just had to kind of put that on hold and here we are a year later and so anyway we're, we're just in a point now kind of where i have a little bit of time where we're going to start documenting and sharing the story Right but here the is where whole... it should be like, yay, and you hit the applause button. Oh, no. No, but I'm, I am really excited to do this because Jeff and I, you know, we've, we met like eight years ago, almost nine years ago. I came to Costa Rica on a solo surf trip, and that's when we had, we had met, and um, there was definitely a strong connection between the two of us, but the timing wasn't right. I ended up moving to Colorado, and we reconnected, and several years later and we're like that's a nail biter kind of steamy no, story I know. we'll tell you later i know no but it's when the ladies are gonna like no but it's it's like you know i'm i'm now i'm um 
Well, I don't know. Does a lady tell her age? No. No. <laughs> okay, I won't tell my age. Then it'll but. get really awkward. <laughs> 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 anyway, it's it's that. Uh, so I'm gonna do my best too, because I'm a little bit of a curmudgeon and. Uh, I'm not the best with having a camera in my face, but I see the benefit of it, and I'm hoping to share some of my knowledge, like I've seen a lot of the sailing channels do, the ones that I like, or the ones where uh, where you're learning something. It is great, and seeing the scenery, and seeing people in beautiful and amazing places, uh, but also even the how-tos are great. Like, uh, it's incredible, um, the wealth of information that's out there, so I'm hoping to be able to throw uh, my hat in the ring and Lindsay's got a ton of talent so you know maybe <laughs> you'll get more how to's with him and then maybe with me it'll be like what not to maybe I don't know I think with cleaning and organizing and cooking and cooking, all she's of those amazing I eat super well but that's what I was saying I mean like uh, I watched the Dallas channel and saw them do uh, they call them uh, stick bread or something like that. <laughs> they no, I think fire. they literally just took like the that's super cool. the Love muffins and like wrapped that. them around. But it's clever. It's uh, very... It's like Pillsbury Doughboy in a stick. It's super yeah. cool. And they eat fresh fish, which is right. That's why we want to be out there. So where I let you guys know kind of the do's and don'ts of cruising in Costa Rica and where, because I've heard it say oh. quite often in the probably three or four videos that I've come across where they're talking about Costa Rica how there's no good anchorages. There's a ton of them, if you know where. Uh, so also, you know, but they're not the link, send us a message, and I can also help you out. Yeah, they're not Googleable. You can't like, oh, top 10 places to anchor. This is, th that's where this guy comes in. He's been here for 20 years, and he's been uh, cruising and sailing this whole coastline. So literally nobody knows this, um, this area better than this guy. And there's a few out there. There's maybe a couple. There's a couple, but those guys probably don't even don't watch TV or YouTube. This guy's as, as Wapo might be as interesting to watch <laughs> them tell. Um, what else did we want to say? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I don't know. I'm a little sick today. And, uh, I like your Nirvana shirt. Thank you. You look like I like to party. To party. We look like camp party behind her, like. We like to party like rock stars. Wait to see We've us out there. We've never even opened that bottle. Right. Wait till we're at the boat show. You can say literally whatever you want. Whatever I want. I like to do this to the camera. Yeah. That's kind of like my signature yeah. mark sometimes. Okay. Means aloha in certain languages. And goodbye. All right. We are, you know, super excited to share, continue sharing our story. This is just the beginning and yeah, we're just, I'm excited, he's excited. Sometimes, right now he's not feeling great, but we do have the next couple of weeks lined up with some really cool um, episodes of, of information. Uh, please subscribe, that really helps us out. Uh, like this video, and if, uh, if, if you find this entertaining at all, if you find it very entertaining, hit the share button and share it with some friends. He's like, oh uh, yeah, whatever. But it's just like the kind of the, the nature of the beast. You gotta say these things on YouTube. Like this video, subscribe, all the things. And yeah, we'll see you in the next week's episode. Thank you. Take Bye. Two. Bye. I wanna do it again. All right, you guys, see ya. See ya. I mean, I'll try to get out of the frame. How about now, babe? But Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. We hope that you enjoyed our story, the beginning of the story. We hope you enjoyed us and Jeff. And if you have anything that you do want to know, please ask questions. We are looking for more information to share. So if there's something specific that you do want to know, uh, please um, write it in the comments, let us know, and we'll be happy to um, answer those questions. Until next time, Pura Vida. Hey, I'm gonna go downstairs to our basement wine cellar. Oh, hey, will you take this back? What, you want me to come back up? Put, put, it, that, put it in the wine cellar. Put that downstairs. You see what I have to deal with? Yeah, buddy! Can you get that new vintage, that 2020? sun be upon our face, the wind upon our back, and we have safe journeys. Oh, we have that right now. Filled with love. <laughs>
Do you have to pour more There's out? There's four little two ounce. Oh. And then a small little, big little dollop to have to So, uh, safe journey. <laughs> Cheers.